Welcome to EHJ Today at the annual meeting of the European Society of Cardiology 2014. I'm Filippo Crea, Associate Editor of the European Art Journal, and I'm sitting here with Professor Capetine from Rotterdam University and with Professor Piazza from McGill University. Uh, Professor Capetine is a member of the task force which has just written the recent uh, guidelines on myocardial revascularization. This is a joint effort of the European Society of Cardiology and also of the Association of Cardio European Association of Cardiac Thoracic Surgeons and European Association of uh, Interventionalists. Uh, this is therefore a joint effort and it is very important because only a joint effort can produce a good document. What is new in these guidelines? Yeah, no, absolutely, you're, you're right. It's a joint effort and it points to the fact that there are different ways to treat patients with uh, myocardial heart disease um, and, and therefore I think it's important that cardiologists work together with the surgeons to produce these guidelines. So it was a very um, great discussion that we had during the production of the guidelines. Well, what was important, and of course, the, what are the issues that were still burning is the left main disease, it's proximal LAD disease that was point of discussion, and I think also the, the point that the heart team is so important to, to get the right decision and to know what kind of mode of revascularization you should use for this particular patient. So what has changed, I think, is uh, since the previous guidelines, is especially the left main disease. In, in the past, it was, let's say, forbidden uh, terrain for, for interventional cardiologists. And that has changed. Uh, I think also thanks to the Syntex trial that showed that in patients with left main disease, isolated or with one or two vessel disease, so the ones with a low syntax score, that PCR actually is a good alternative to surgery. And so that, that, uh, that has changed as well. Uh, proximal LAD disease, about a little bit the same issue there. In the, in the past, you know, it was more surgery was the preferred way to revascularize, and that has also been, you know, discussed quite a lot, and especially in those patients that have also have core morbidities. Uh, PCI might be a very good alternative there. Surgery is still in a kind of invasive treatment, which is very good for patients with extensive coronary disease. But you see a trend that PCI is taking over, especially the ones with three vessel disease, which are not so complex, and the left main disease, which are not so complex. Peter, in terms of uh, left main disease, uh, are there just isolated left main disease. Are there certain types of left main diseases that would be better treated with PCI versus surgery? And well, what, what do the guidelines suggest? Yeah, so, so um, the one with bifurcation disease, uh, that's still a point of discussion. Actually, the Syntex trial also showed pretty good results uh, for PCI with uh, patients with bifurcation. Uh, but of course, it was a small subgroup of patients. So I think before we move in the direction that every left main disease can be treated with PCI, I think we need further evidence. And that's what we were lacking today uh, when we wrote the guidelines, is uh, that we need the results of the Excel study to uh, guide us better in what type of patient can also be treated with PCI. And of course, with new stents on the market, uh, Syntex study was uh, with the Texas stent, and, and which are considered now old-fashioned. Um, I think we need to see the results with new stents. With the and a new generation drug eluding stents. Peter, just for uh, viewers, can you just give us a, a quick synopsis of what the Excel trial is? Yeah, so the Excel uh, trial is a trial where patients are randomized uh, between coronary bypass surgery and or PCI in patients with left main disease with a syntax co of 32 or less. So these are not the patients with very extensive coronary disease, uh, with three vessel disease associated with left main disease, but more the patients who are really good candidates also for PCI. So the surgeon and cardiologist had to sit together again and, and decide whether you could uh, get clinical equipoise with both treatments and then the patient could be randomized. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the, the trial had to be stopped at 1,900 patients and while we first aimed to enroll 2,600 patients, but the good thing is that the study will still have an 80% power um, and to show a result. Uh, there's a minimum follow-up of two years and uh, with a median follow-up of three years. Um, and so hopefully, not next year, but the year after at the meeting of the ESC, we will we'll be able to discuss the, the, the results of the Excel study. Anything new on uh, diabetic patients? We know this is an important subset and challenging subset. Absolutely. Now diabetes, again, were the patient with more extensive coronary disease. And it was always thought that, you know, uh, coronary bypass surgery was the only way to treat those patients, especially when they had 
two, three vessel disease. Um, but also here, I think the CITES score helped very much in, in pointing to the fact that if patients have a CITES score below 22 or between 22 and 32, that PCI might be an alternative as well. What you see is that the results are, at one year, are worse in diabetic patients, both with PCI and coronary bypass surgery, compared to the non-diabetes patients. But uh, in those patients who have uh, coronary artery disease with a low CITES score, PCI is, is a good alternative. And, and so I think that therefore you really have to sit down together, interventionist and cardio and surgeon, to look at the angiogram and see where how diseased the vessels are, but also take into account the comorbidities. And of course, there are a lot of patients with, with uh, diabetes that have a lot of comorbidities as well. So that brings to the other point is that what is also now included in the guidelines is the Syntax 2 score. Uh, in the previous guidelines was already the Syntax score, uh, which is only looking the, uh, at the anatomy of the coronary vessels. But now with the Syntax 2 sc score, it also takes into account the comorbidities of the patient. So you can better differentiate what kind of treatment you want to give. But the uh, bottom line is that the role of the heart team is more and more important. Yeah. More and more decisions have to be taken jointly between surgeons and cardiologists. Absolutely. I think that that's, again, there was already uh, new in the previous guidelines that the, the heart team was a 1C recommendation. And of course, it stays a C recommendation because we don't have a lot of evidence that it works. But people, at, at least the people from the task force that, that were around the table, thought that it, it, it is uh, a great advantage to discuss the patients together. To, to get the right decision. And of course, that also points to the fact, so should we discuss all patients? Um, and, and if you talk with American colleagues, they always say, well, you know, it takes a long time and, and time is money and we need to treat patients and it may postpone the decision. On the other hand, if you, if you change your decision because you had this hard team discussion, you may save even patients' lives. And you may even save time, because if you give the wrong treatment to the patient, then the patient will come back. Um, and so therefore, I think in Europe, we are a little bit further and progress, and we th see the value of the heart team discussion. And, um, and I think that that's important. Uh, let's first discuss the case, not do a direct PCI, but discuss the, 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 the case, and then, um, and then th do the right treatment. Peter, you had mentioned uh, left main disease, and you also, in a sentence, mentioned proximal AD disease as well. Um, what do we know about proximal AD disease and what did the guidelines suggest us to do in these scenarios with and without diabetes? Yeah, uh, oh, absolutely important point. And it was, that created a lot of discussion within the task force. Of course, the surgeon said, you know, if you put a lima to the LAD, that's the ultimate solution for the patient. And, and a proximal LAD, if you get a complication from your stent, that may have a major impact on the patient's, uh, well, at least their their, their morbidity, but even maybe the life expectancy. So we came to the solution that at least it should be offered to the patient the option of having coronary bypass surgery. I can see the point that you know a lot of people say, well, you know, let's treat the patient with PCI and it's a less invasive approach. But if you explain to the patient what the benefits are of both treatments, and then the patient chooses for PCI, then it's fine. It's, it's also the patient's choice. So actually in the heart team, you then also include the patients in the discussion, which is important, of course, as well, to show them the benefits of both treatments, the advantages and disadvantages. So what has changed now is that uh, PCI is, for proximal D disease, is, is okay, but uh, the patient should at least be informed also about the alternative treatment. I have the last short question, short answer. Just to summarize, if we have 100 patients candidate for revascularization, what is the percentage going straight for surgery, the percentage going straight for uh, intervention, percutaneous intervention, and the percentage to discuss in the heart team? So I think the, the, the patient can go straight forward for PCI uh, without discussion in the heart team. I would say that's a minority. It's uh, probably less than 10 percent. Well, no, no, no. Still, it's about I think it's still 25, 30 percent. I mean, that those patients with one vessel disease, two vessel disease, which are short lesions, etc. I think you can write a protocol in your own hospital, say, well, these are the patients we don't need to discuss. The other extreme? Uh, the other extreme is the patient that go directly to surgery with extensive coronary disease, high syntax core, which percentage? left main disease. That's about 10% only, 5%, 10%. So more than 50% definitely have to be discussed in the exactly. team. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to finish with this punchline and thank you for this very interesting conversation.